In this video, we are going to talk about pairing functions. We have been talking about functions, and so what we're going to specifically look at is different types of functions and what we consider the parent function for each type of function. So I am going to be using a free software online and online graphing calculator called Desmos. You can go to it by typing in desmos.com and then it'll give you the option to use this free graphing calculator. And so the first function, parent function I want to start with is called the identity function. You can see the name of it right here in the top left. And this is the function defined by f of x equal x. So it's called the identity function because whatever you plug in for x, remember x is your input, is exactly what you get out. So right here I have a table and I have my favorite five values. I like to call these my favorite five. These are my favorite five values I like to plug in. You can have your own favorite five because x is the independent variable. You can plug in whatever you want to plug in for x. So if I plug in negative 2 for x, then what I get out is negative 2. If I plug in negative 1, I get out negative 1, and so forth. If I plug in 0, I get out 0. So this gives me points on the graph, or ordered, what we call ordered pairs. So negative 2, negative 2 is a point on the graph. So if I go to negative 2, negative 2, I would plot that point. Negative 1, negative 1 is also a point on the graph. 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 2. And you will see that these points form a line until so you will draw a line through those points. So this is the graph of the identity function. This is the parent function for lines. This is the graph that cuts the first and third quadrants directly in half. So this is your parent function for lines, the identity function. The second parent function is called the squaring function. Here's the name of it, squaring function. And here is the function f of x equal x squared. So basically now whatever you plug in, you'll be squaring it. So if I take my favorite five points in my table right here and I plug them in, negative two squared is four, negative one squared is one, zero squared is zero, and so forth. And I plot these points. So negative two, four is here, negative one, one is here, zero, zero here, one, one is here, and two, four is here. So if you just plot the points, you will see that the points follow the shape of a U or what we call a parabola and you will sketch a graph through those points. And so this is the graph of the squaring function. This is your parent function for all quadratics is U shaped and it passes through the origin. The next parent function is what we call the cubing function. Here's the name of it here. It is the function defined by f of x equal x to the third. And so now whatever we plug in for x, we're going to be raising it to the third power. So I have my favorite five values here. So negative 2 to the third, that's the same as saying negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. That's negative 8. Negative 1 to the third is negative 1. 0 to the third is 0. 1 to the third is 1. 2 to the third power is 8. And if I plot those points, let me zoom out a little bit. You'll see here in negative 2, you have the point negative 8. It's at the very bottom. You can barely see it. But it's right there at that point at the bottom. Negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 8. So this table is giving me points on my graph. And it follows a curve that comes up and goes around like this. This is your cubing function. This is the parent function for all cubic functions. Those are powers or functions that have a highest exponent of 3. So this is the parent function for the cubing function. The next one is the square root function. Here's the name of it. Square root function is defined by f of x equal to the square root of x. So now whatever you plug in, you're taking the square root of it. So this time, my favorite 5 wouldn't work. Because if I plug in a negative number, if I was to plug in negative 2, then I would get out something with an I in it, which is an imaginary number. And as we know, imaginary numbers wouldn't have any points on this graph. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to plug in numbers that I know the square root of, like 0, 1, 4, 9, and 16. Square root of 0 is 0. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 16 is 4. And if I plug those points in, here's 0, 0, 1, 1, 
16.4293 and 16.4 and sketch a curve through those points and here is what your parent function for square roots look like the square root function and it doesn't have an arrow on here but the graph actually keeps going on and on in that direction so technically there should be an arrow on the end The next parent function is what we call the cube root function. Here's the name of it. It's defined by f of x equal to the cube root of x. So now whatever you plug in, you're going to take the cube root of it. So again, my favorite five wouldn't work, so I pick numbers that I know the cube root of. And this is kind of the reverse of the cubing function. So in the cubing function, I had in my favorite five, which is on the right side, but this time I'm going to put the values that I actually know that I could have a number raised to the third power to get. So negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, and 8. So the cube root of negative 8 means what do I multiply by itself three times to get negative 8? And that's negative 2 because negative 2 times negative 2 is 4 times another negative 2 is negative 8. What's the cube root of negative 1? That's negative 1. Cube root of 0 is 0 and so forth. Plot those points. You get negative 8, negative 2, which is right here, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 8, 2. Sketch a curve through those, and this is the shape that the cube root function has. It almost looks like the cubing function as well, except it is turned on its side and flipped. I don't know if you can imagine that, but it's actually rotated and then flipped over the x-axis. So pretty similar. That's the cube root function. Next one is the absolute value function. This is, so I have ABS here, but the absolute value is actually um, the two lines with the X inside. And that means you taking the distance of the number from zero. So my favorite five will work here. So the absolute value of negative two is two. That means how far is negative two from zero is two units. The absolute value of negative one is one. The absolute value of zero is zero and so forth. And if you plot those points, Negative 2, 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 2. Sketch the graph or the line that goes through those, and it's actually V shaped. So, this is the parent function for your absolute value functions, and it follows the shape of a V. The next parent function is called the reciprocal function. And now, whatever you plug in, you're taking the reciprocal of it. Here's the name of it reciprocal function. You're going to take the reciprocal of the number that you plug in. So if I use my favorite five, the reciprocal of negative two is negative one half. The reciprocal of negative one is negative one. If I plug in zero, I end up with a zero in the denominator, which is undefined. And so we actually have what's called an asymptote at zero. We'll talk about those later. That just means there's a break in the graph. The reciprocal of one is one. The reciprocal of two is one half. If you plot those points, Negative 2, negative 1 half, negative 1, negative 1, 1, 1, and 2, 1 half. You actually get two curves, one in the third quadrant and one in the first quadrant. You end up with the broken up graph, um, or what we also call a non-continuous graph. And this is what it looks like. This is the parent function for um, rational functions that have only a linear function in the denominator. And these are your six parent functions. What you need to know is the shapes of them, um, the, the actual function or the formula for them. And the most important thing is the shape. So you can um, be able to look at a graph and identify what type of function is this. And so if you have any questions whatsoever about these six parent functions, make sure you include them in the comments below. Um, if you don't have any questions, then go watch the next video, which is transformations of graphs.